announced back in October 19, 2023, Duet Night Abyss is a game that many people, including myself, have been waiting for with great anticipation. Luckily for us, the developer Hero Games held their first technical test and were kind enough to grant us access to the test. In today's video, we will be doing a brief overview of Duet Night Abyss based on my experience from the technical test. Because this was a technical test, a lot of the dialogue and finer story beats have not been implemented proper. For this reason, we won't cover the story here. We will also not talk about the world because at first glance, one could make the assumption that it's a pretty generic looking sandbox. But again, this is a technical test, so I don't believe that's what's in display here. After putting some time into Duet Knight's combat, I can tell you with confidence what you saw in its trailer was indeed real-time combat. Characters here come equipped with three abilities, their skill, ultimate, and passive. Skills and ultimate have no cooldowns but are instead tied to your sanity meter. Your sanity meter fills passively over time and can be hastened while in combat. You can cast any skill at any time as long as you have the sanity to do so. Once activated, some characters like Barry have the ability to cancel their roaming abilities, as seen with her ultimate. This is a very useful feature allowing you to cast your ultimate to deal with a large crowd and canceling it once the job is done to conserve sanity. Apart from your character's unique skills, all characters can be equipped with a melee weapon like a sword or lance, and a range weapon like an assault rifle, shotgun or pistols. Because these weapons can be equipped to any character, they really open up the potentials for diverse builds regardless of what the character's unique skills were. That being said, each character does have a preferred weapon type, and equipping them with their preferred type will result in better damage. Some characters like Barry and Lin have access to a special signature weapon called a consonance weapon. These weapons are locked to that character and are only usable in their ultimates. Your character's skills, ultimate and passive, can be upgraded to increase their potency. Speaking of upgrades, Demon Wedges will play a crucial role when building your characters. You can think of them as artifacts from other games. Up to nine of these wedges can be equipped to your character, their equipped range and melee weapon, and their consonance weapons. Before you start sweating bricks, wedges are shared across all of your characters, meaning you can equip all of your characters with a single upgraded set. For example, I can equip Barry with a set, then go to Rebecca and equip her with that same set and both characters would have it equipped at the same time. Likewise, weapon wedges are shared across all weapon of the same type. And by that, I mean swords share all sword wedges, lances share all lance wedges, and firearms share all range weapon wedges. Although you have nine slots for wedges, wedges have the intrinsic cost to equip, and the cost of a wedge will change the higher its level. The tolerance bar acts as a limiter. In this case, Rebecca's bar caps out at 40. Meaning, if we wanted to utilize all four slots, we would need four wedges whose total value does not exceed the number 40. We can reduce the cost of a wedge by binding the symbol on it to the slot we're equipping it to. This can be done using a track shift module. As you can see, the cost for the current wedge on this slot is eight. But if we use a shifting module to match the slot to the symbol on the wedge, the cost is reduced to four. Although this system seems fairly simple, there is some depth here, and I can't wait to see what these wedges look like in future builds. By clicking on A, B, or C here, you can swap between wedge loadouts. Hopefully we'll see more than three option in the future, but the fact they had the foresight to add this to the technical test is refreshing, especially since a lot of established games seems to wait until years down the line to give us such a crucial feature and we can't leave the character customization screen before visiting the dressing room. Here you can add funny hair ornaments, eye patches, freaking sage spectacles, and much more. These are small changes to your character's appearance, but they are absolutely welcome. Combat here in Abyss Knight have been pretty interesting. Like I mentioned before, each character have their unique skill, ultimate and passive. But your universal melee weapons, range weapons, and amazing movement abilities are the real stars here. Starting with movement, you have no sprint button. You have a dedicated dodge input with two charges that lets you dodge backward, forward, left and right on the ground and in mid-air, 
you have a dedicated crouch and slide button that can be activated both on the ground and in midair. And lastly, you have a jump button which allow you to do a basic jump, and if press again in midair, do a second midair jump. By themselves, these are pretty uneventful, but holding down your slide input and performing a jump will allow you to perform what the game calls a helix leap. This will boost you forward in the direction the camera is currently facing. You can then chain in your double jump and your dodge skill to cover some serious ground. If height is what you need, look up before performing your helix leap. This will shoot you up giving you some insane air. You can use this to cover large gaps, evade enemies, or my favorite use case, to rain down bullets from the air like an AC-130. You may have noticed there is only one playable character on screen. Unlike the myriad of other games that let you quick swap between three to four characters, Duet Knight takes a slightly different approach. By using a sigil and equipping them with a weapon, other characters can fight by your side. But you will only ever control one unit at a time. If they fall in battle, you can revive them, but there is a limited amount of revives. If you don't have a spare weapon, they can be forged along with various other items. In games like this, we often spend a fair amount of our time grinding upgrade materials. While these can be harmless at first, they can eventually feel like a chore to complete. While that grind is definitely present here, Abyss Knight does add a fun spin to the mundane by turning all of the resource grind into a horde mode. These modes do have a timer and can end at your leisure, but you can choose to stay in them after completing your objective. This will consume some stamina and just keep spawning enemies in waves. The more waves you complete, the more stamina consumed. Of course, you'll be rewarded with the domains given material. You can pretty much use them as a way to check your builds and capture cool moments, but do be careful at higher difficulty. These mods will quickly overrun you. Fighting against rank and file mobs are nice and all, but they don't offer much of a challenge outside of their sheer numbers. But no worries. During my playthrough, I came across two pretty interesting bosses. These fight were intense, and if there are more of them scattered around the world, we might be in for a real treat. This game have a lot of potential, and I mean a lot. But there are some things I would love to see improved next time we see this gem. Number one on my list of things I would like to see improve is controls. This goes both for MNK and controller. As a controller player, this was pretty rough. Even for you, MNK players, I'm sure you guys would have appreciated an option for custom key binds. Number two, finer controls over the helix leap function. Right now, the game will boost you in the direction of the camera, regardless of the directional inputs from the player. Maybe this is one of those things you get used to over time, but I would like to see our directional inputs being taken into consideration when performing a helix leap. Number three, lack of a sprint button. This one may feel a bit off since we have such good movement with helix leaps, but I feel like a dedicated sprint button would go a long way. Maybe we could use it as a way to cover even more ground with helix leaps and it could share the same input as the dodge skill. Tap to dodge, hold to sprint. Number four, plunge attack. Current mid-air plunge attacks feel very stiff and it suffers from the same point I mentioned on number two. If there is an enemy behind you, and you turn your character toward it without putting him in your crosshair, your character will just plunge attack towards whatever location the camera is currently looking and ignore your directional inputs and the enemy. Number five, a better lock onto target feature. There were many times doing combat where I felt like I was just flailing at the wind. So having a capable target lock system, whether it's manual or automatic base on the enemy's proximity to you would be greatly appreciated. Number six would be performance issues, but this is a technical test, so ignore I even said that. If only one of the things I mentioned here is possible, please let it be finer controls. The game can feel very off at times, and it's because of the way certain actions are bind currently. Giving us control over those keybinds can drastically improve the experience. Overall, Duet Night is pretty much exactly what was advertised, and I cannot wait to see how much it improves next time we see it. Until next time, everyone, peace.